first question. Can you tell us about your research and your area of interest? Sure. So I'm, I'm working on a research project now that's called uh, Educational Justice for All, uh, which is looking at how universities in the UK are promoting equality for all students, uh, not just home students, but also international students. Uh, and the reason for doing that project uh, is that typically when we talk about equality, our policies around equality are focused on the nation state. When we talk about educational equality, uh, it's about people who are citizens or permanent residents and so forth. And now we have increasing numbers of international students coming into uh, universities that raises a question, how do our ideals and practice of equality need to change, or how are they changing? Um, and so for the project, I'm talking to students and staff and, and administrators at eight different universities around the UK, um, and trying to learn from, from their perspectives. What are the issues, what are the challenges, what are the, the innovative practices that are coming up um, to address these issues? Do you think that the change in student cohorts in the UK, higher education, is the reason or the motivation for pushing the inclusive practice pedagogy? Well, I mean, for, to an extent, yes. I mean, I think uh, if you didn't have diverse, I mean, when you look at who are the students and staff who are promoting the inclusive uh, pedagogy, uh, it tends to be students and staff who come from different backgrounds. So the fact that you have uh, um, uh, a diverse, more diverse than students and staff raise the issue. I think it's been like that since the, the start of mass higher education back in the 1960s, uh, when you had a lot of student protests wanting to set up ethnic studies programs or women's studies programs. Again, it was a response to different kinds of students coming onto, onto campus. So definitely that has an impact. Um, but, but I think there's not, uh, I, I mean, you could turn the question around. Uh, why, why isn't there more a focus on inclusive pedagogy or, or different kinds of diverse curriculums and pedagogy? than there are. Um, and certainly my experience feels, coming from North America to the UK, I came here uh, about f five years ago now, um, that I find it shocking how little some of these issues around diversity are discussed um, here um, and, and, and are not part of the regular conversation about pedagogy or curriculum. With that said, what advice would you give to teachers and lecturers teaching a non-diverse cohort? Non-diverse cohort. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure there is a non-diverse cohort. Uh, I think I think cohorts are diverse in all different ways. I, I, uh, my current job, I teach at the Institute of Education. Uh, I lead an undergraduate program. I started uh, just last last semester. It's very diverse in terms of class and and race and ethnicity. Uh, also, home and international students. Um, about 80% of our students right now come from black minority ethnic backgrounds, so it's very diverse. Previous to that, I taught uh, at Cardiff University uh, in, in Wales, again on an undergraduate program. Most of the students were, were white middle class, but it wasn't non-diverse. Uh, even within the white middle class group, there was incredible diversity of the kind of schools uh, people went to, where regions they went came from. Um, and then, of course, there were, even though a very small group of, of international or students who came from black and minority ethnic backgrounds that were there. So, so I'm not sure there is a, a non-diverse. Uh, so wherever you are, whatever kind of diverse, one is to kind of understand the diversity you, you, you're encountering. Um, and, and, I mean, it's tricky in a, in a time of mass higher education, right, when you have these large classrooms. Uh, um, my teaching at Cardiff in the first year, I taught a, a, a group where it was 250 students in a big lecture. And I, I didn't even know everybody's names, let alone their backgrounds. But it's an ideal when you were in seminar groups, when you have smaller, smaller uh, classes, is to find out where the students are coming from, what their backgrounds are, and, 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 to, and to space your teaching around that, that background. Um, and even in the classroom that, that, that seems the most uh, homogeneous, I think there's incredible diversity to work with. So what are your thoughts on the students, um, the student campaigns such as why is the curriculum white, Rhodes must fall, and UAL so white? I think it's really exciting to see this uh, this kind of student organizing. And of course, in the United States right now, there's there's very similar um, uh, organizing around around uh, parallel issues. I mean, some of the shock to me is is that 
uh, why is it now <laughs> you know, that some of these issues have been going on for, for decades? Uh, there's a kind of question about why now, why, hasn't it, why didn't this happen a decade ago or two decades ago? But I think it's, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think uh, having a, a heightened level of student activism around trying to reshape what we're doing in universities, um, on no matter what the issue is, is, is to be uh, welcomed. And, and from my point of view, as someone who leads a program, uh, the more active students there are challenging me and colleagues about what we're doing and trying to work together to create programs is, is a great thing. And these specific issues around looking at, at lack of racial diversity, especially in curriculum and in pedagogy, I think is, is absolutely something we need to be paying more attention to. Um, and also the, you know, the sim symbolism that really matters in terms of these kinds of these campuses and campuses and these, and these buildings that um, were set up a long time ago and, and still have those, re those remnants, right, in the face of, of colonialist and imperialist uh, and, and racist um, uh, heritage that I think it's fantastic to see that being questioned. So I hope to see more of that. Okay, so the last question. Do you have any advice based on your own practice that you'd like to share? Oh, I don't know. I'm always trying to learn from other people, I think. Uh, one, one of the things that I think, because I've just started at, at, at the Institute of Education uh, with this new undergraduate program in education studies, is taking advantage of, of those of us, including myself, who've crossed boundaries. So I, I started my undergraduate education in Canada. Uh, I did my PhD in, this, in the United States and, and started my teaching career there. And, and so just being aware of the different ways of, that things can be done, that undergraduate education can be done, can be um, really helpful, I think, in terms of um, changing things. Um, simple things that we've done, I mean, we talked about the uh, issue of, of diversifying the curriculum. Um, when, I, when I started my first teaching job at Berkeley, uh, one of the, the common practices that I was taught to do was that when you designed a, um, a, a module outline, I guess you'd call it here, a module handbook, um, you go over it just to look at the readings and the topics in terms of the diversity of that, in terms of the racial, who, who your authors were, so you don't end up with a list of just all white male authors and, and topics. And that was just standard practice, I, I, and it became something you didn't even, it was just kind of built into how you develop a, a so one of the things uh, coming here um, to the Institute of Education is we have these equality and diversity forms that everybody has to fill out that, to be honest, are often quite pro forma. It's just checking the box and, and so forth. All, all I've done is asked every staff member when they're developing a new module to, um, to make a statement about how they're paying attention to the race, nationality, and gender um, of the core readings and of the, of the core topics uh, in there. It doesn't mean that they have to have you know, a, a black or an Asian or whatever. It doesn't. It, it's just saying, think about it and make a statement about how you're putting this together. And that's something I just, you know, wasn't me. I learned that from from Brooklyn. I think there's lots of practices like that. Um, and so again, it's a it's a um, it's a reason to try and have diverse. Uh, teaching staff, not just in terms of other race in the class, but also where they get trained, um, uh, and 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 having people move around between universities because that's where we can start being more reflective of our practice and uh, and learn from one another.